Hey, it's Goet. I wanted to talk about a question that a lot of people who draw get, which is also like paired with a statement that you get a lot, which is like, oh man, I wish I could draw that well. Or, that's the statement, right? Or there's the question, which is, how do I draw that well? Or how do I get to the point where I'm able to draw that? And the answer that I see a lot of people give is, well, if you want to get good at something, you have to do it a lot. And I don't know, I don't think it's disingenuous when people give this as a response to that question, as an answer to that question or a response to that comment. Um, I do think that it is big art propaganda, though, because the act of doing something a lot definitely does not mean that you will get better at it. For example, like I play a lot of I play a lot of fighting games. I have always been and probably always will be very mediocre at fighting games, despite loving to play them. However, I'm not trying to become like a technical master in the execution of my fighting game strategy. However, one thing that I do hope to be is a better artist in the future, a better person who draws. I don't know if I would necessarily use the term art, but that's a completely different um, different subject that I feel like the definition of like an illustrator and the definition of an artist are two completely different things. Anyways, somebody comes up to you and they're like, hey, this is so cool. How do I draw like that? How do I create something to the ability and technical, like the visual technical skill level that you have achieved? And it's a, it's a, it's a rough question, isn't it? Because the easy answer, the big art propaganda answer is, well, you see, you got to bust up that sketchbook and you have to draw a lot. I, I do not agree because up until like maybe a year, a year and a half ago, I drew a lot, but I've only started noticing improvements in like my actual drawings after I started taking steps to not necessarily practice specific things, but focus on the meta of what I'm doing. That's not, that's, hmm, it's a bit of a weird, bit of a weird take, I think. Um, so when I say the meta of what I'm doing, so I'm sitting down, I'm drawing like a face and profile, and instead of just drawing the face and profile, instead of dra- like taking up a reference and copying the face and profile, I'm thinking like, what is this face and profile, right? Like, what are the forms of this face and profile? Specifically with drawing, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it that I feel like a lot of prodigal folk, people who start off just real good, are doing and don't even realize they're doing. Um, and that is taking account of the forms of a three-dimensional object and recreating them in two dimensions, which is a unique and difficult skill for people who do not innately possess that ability to learn. Like, I have no idea what's going on in 3D space and no idea how to translate that into 2D space. Or maybe I should say that I should or that I did not have that ability until I started focusing on it. And when people ask you, how do I draw like that? They're not asking what they think they're asking. They're asking... Because like the, the, the answer that they're expecting is you need to do these steps and then you can create an image that you want to create to the degree of technical acumen that you want to create it. And I think a lot of the time to say that they need to practice and draw often is, is a good thing, right? Like it's simple, it's propagandistic in that it's just not the whole the whole story, but it gives somebody a a place to start. I feel like the real answer as to like, how do I draw like that? How do I get better at art is you have to understand what it is that you want to create 
and then understand the steps to create that thing. Because it's a creative pursuit, you know? Drawing stuff. It's not... It's not a recreative pursuit. Which is to say, like, something where it, it already exists and you can you can take it and you can create a copy. Like, you are creating something that doesn't exist based off of a library of information that you have gathered and that you have had to interpret into something else, right? So I have seen thousands of flowers throughout my lifetime. With If I'm not using a reference, what I am doing is I am going through a mental Rolodex of all the flowers that I have seen in my lifetime, and I'm saying, okay, I know what flowers should look like. I'm going to take the forms of the flower and try to translate that into a 2D medium, which is a wild thing to think about. Being a human is wicked awesome, right? So a lot of artists, a lot of people who would call themselves artists have built up like this bank of memory, right? And they can say, I would like to draw a flower coming out of a soda can on a dark, dimly lit hallway. Um, and then maybe there are some background elements and then there's like a spider in the corner and it's a happy spider. And they, they just have this all down, right? And it's because even if they don't necessarily have the visual library, they know what it is that they're going to be drawing from the, from the start. And in knowing what they're going to be drawing, they have the capability of searching for forms that make sense in 3D and then taking those forms and applying them to 2D. And there's a lot more that goes into to artwork and illustration than just like three-dimensional forms. But I think that an ability to recreate reality is maybe the single most important thing in creating artwork that people would consider good or would consider artwork that they wish they could be able to draw, right? So in essence, I, I don't like the, to summarize, right? I don't like it when people say, well, you just have to draw a lot. Crack open that sketchbook and get drawing as an answer for how do I get better at art. Another answer that people give out is use a lot of reference, right? And reference is good, but reference is not good because you're able to copy the reference, right? Reference is important because it helps add to your visual library of information that you can draw upon in the future. And, and this is probably the most important thing when using reference, you have to deconstruct your reference and understand what it is you're looking at. Because most of the time, if you're using a reference, you're using it because there's something complicated going on that you want to convey that you don't understand. And I feel like a lot of people who use reference but do not improve their artwork in using reference are not improving because they are not deconstructing what's happening in their reference image. So, like, if you have a reference at perspective and it's an extreme perspective and you copy it, well, then congratulations. You've created the form, but you don't know, like, Intelligence-wise, you don't know what has gone into the recreation of that form. And in the future, when you try to call it back from your visual memory, you might have some ideas, but it might appear off because there are mechanical errors in your illustration that are apparent because you didn't take the time to internalize them when you had the initial reference up. Um, this is something that I a couple of months was running up against because I wanted to do some stuff at some pretty pretty harsh perspectives. And I came to realize that I wasn't paying attention so much to the forms that were being distorted by the perspective, but rather I was focused on how it looked and recreating the image that I was referencing with the, with the bells and whistles and the little, you know, original touches on top of it. And... 
I think that's a big misconception about reference. When you pull up your reference, it's not to recreate what is there. It is to understand, uh, internalize, and then manipulate the information that you have received to create the thing that you want to create. And it doesn't help, I don't think, that a lot of the times you'll hear people and they'll say, like, hey, you shouldn't use reference. Or, like, hey, when you use reference, you're copying. And stuff like that. There's a weird stigma around using references um, to improve, despite it being an incredibly important tool. Because that's it's what all of life is. When you're a baby, what are you doing? You're copying your parents, right? You're, you're looking around your environment, you're seeing how things work, and you're doing what people around you have done to manipulate those objects for yourself, right? And then over time, you change the way you manipulate those objects based on other factors, right? And everything throughout life is reference, is copying, and then adding your own original twist on top of it. So like, my mother made a macaroni and cheese, I learned how to make macaroni and cheese the same as she did. However, maybe me personally, I'm not particularly fond of feta. So I removed the feta and I have my own macaroni and cheese reference, our recipe. So like, I have an artist. He draws a lovely character. That character has a bow. And I like that character a lot. That artist, I've, I've referenced their character and I have removed the bow, right? Like, there's, there's a lot of steps that go into that. And going throughout all those steps, especially in terms of referencing things for artwork, I feel like, is very much stigmatized. Despite it being the way that, you know, human beings just work. It, there, there's something to be said for tracing, for just copying whole cloth, right? At, at a certain point, you have... It's, it's a weird thing to think about, because at a certain point, you have taken somebody's labor, right? The, the time that they spent learning the techniques and the forms to create an illustration that you like, and if you trace it, you have taken all of their time and you've reduced it to a replicable um, commodity, effectively. And it feels very much like theft, I think. Because in a, in a way, it's, it is. Like, you have still done the labor to recreate something, but you've, you've stolen the intellectual work that has gone into creating that thing to begin with which is which is why in like common law you have things like intellectual property right like somebody could bring you a light bulb and you could disassemble the light bulb learn how it works and then create your own light bulbs but you haven't had to go through the process of creating the light bulb from scratch whereas the other person did have to go through that process so in a sense in like a in a weird way you have stolen that person's time to advance yourself however you have not learned anything from the theft of that person's time which is why i think tracing and copying wholesale is so frowned upon but they get conflated with referencing which is the the act of internalizing that information and then using it to improve yourself in the future and i think that is why there's a stigma behind it right so like it it's really just rather strange isn't it if if i could give one takeaway it would be that referencing is good Copying, um, tracing, not nearly as good. And the reason why those things are not as good is because you are not taking the time to understand what is there. Whereas if you reference something, you have to internalize what's going on, 
while as when whereas when copying you are able to recreate something without understanding what it is you're recreating i think that's a succinct way of putting it so when somebody so when somebody comes to you and it's like hey i would really like to be better at art or man i wish i could draw with that instead of just saying well you got to draw a lot I would highly recommend encouraging them to figure out what it is specifically they want to draw and then use reference to the point of understanding what that thing they want to draw is. So if somebody comes to you and is like, man, I really wish I could draw landscapes, well, then you would tell them, hey, get some, go outside Go to some landscapes that you really like and just like draw the forms of that landscape. You know, focus on the individual trees. What goes into making this landscape aesthetic? And then after you have the forms, after you have the building blocks, then you can move on and given your reference, apply the points that you think will make something that you would want to draw. Right, because the I want to draw like that is completely separate from I want to be able to draw. And in order to be able to draw like that or get better, you have to have the foundation, which is in most art going to be the forms, the 3D underpinnings that exist that you want to recreate. Yeah, that's that went on a bit longer than I thought it would, but I, I've been thinking about it a little bit because it's a question that you get a lot. Like, hey, I would like to get better at this. I would like to draw like that. And the answers that I see people give, I don't necessarily agree with. Anyways, until next time, ciao.